When you open Enforce, the first thing you see is the project manager. The folders down the left of the screen denote separate parts of the Enforce database, or SDB file. Each folder can be thought of like a drawer in a filing cabinet. Data can be imported into a section of the project file by right-clicking it and choosing the Import option. Apart from images and point clouds, all other data that is imported into an Enforce project now lives in the project. In theory, you could delete the original files from the computer that were imported, and Enforce would still have its copy in the database. This makes it very easy to share Enforce data, as generally all that needs to be provided is the project file. No matter how many CAD drawings, CSV files and models, etc. have been created, it is all saved to one SDB file. Another way data can be imported is via dragging and dropping. Here, an XML file from a Leica instrument is dragged and dropped into the project. Note the top folder, Survey Data, is focused. That means Enforce will try and extract as much as it can from the file. In other words, stations, observations, and or coordinates if they are found in the file. If the focus in the tree was just on the observations folder, then only jobs and their setups would be imported. In this example, the XML contains a few stations, a single job with a single total station setup, and a block of coordinates computed by the logger. These coordinates are probably the results of the total station observations. There is no link, though, between the observations and coordinates. When they are in separate parts of the project like this, they are not connected in any way. Later on, we will calculate the observations to derive their coordinates, which will then be directly linked to the observations. Having imported some total station data, we will now import a standard CSV file by highlighting the coordinates folder and then dragging and dropping into the project. As there is no set format for CSV files, we need to guide Enforce as to what data is in the file. This is done by setting up filters to describe what type of data is in each field. Once the data is imported, it can be viewed graphically by double-clicking on its icon in the tree. Note the drawing is done via the code table, in Enforce automatically translating the codes attached to the points into CAD tail. Later on, we will see how to set up the code table and to configure it to draw various types of detail. Coordinate blocks in Enforce are like backups of the original data. They are not really used for creating deliverables. They act more as a way of having the original data to hand should it be needed at a later date. The process of drawing up a survey starts by making a model of the data. Models are separate from observations and coordinates. They can contain active models that can be used for drawing up surveys, designs, stockpile quantities, digitized surveys from point clouds, rail data, road alignments, and so on. Here, we will start a new model by generating it from this coordinate block, essentially giving us a duplicate of the data to go on and edit. For now, we will just form a DTM to give us a surface of the ground. Enabling the height shading gives a more colorful way to interpret the topology of the model. The third cube icon opens the 3 VR view, which allows the model data to be viewed from any angle in real time. So far, we have imported raw observations and coordinates. Enforce also has a CAD engine capable of displaying as well as reading and writing AutoCAD, DWG, and DXF files. As before, they are imported by selecting the appropriate folder, in this case, CAD folder, then dragging and dropping the data into it. When a CAD model is selected, the right-hand side of the project manager changes to show the layers and their associated properties. Multiple CAD files can be imported into a project. The CAD folder will just update to show the new data should more files be dragged and dropped into the project. To view the CAD data graphically, double-click on their pencil icons. Each will open in a new window. 
This window can then be dragged onto different monitors if needed to demonstrate that all this data is saved into a single file. We will now save it and then clear the project before deleting the files we just imported. As you can see, even though the original files no longer exist, when the project sdb file is dragged and dropped into nforce, it reloads, and all the data that was there before is still there. To finish this introduction to nforce, we will quickly create a new blank model and manually insert some points with the code to see what happens. To begin with, we will set the height of the points to null, effectively making them 2D, and set the code to BB, or bottom of batter, to draw us some kind of basic line. As you can see, as each point is added, a green dashed line with grey points is being added to the model view. With tooltips and hovering enabled, we can place the mouse cursor over a point to see its properties. Clicking on a point with no command active, opens the Point Properties dialog. The same can also be accessed by clicking the Query Point tool at the start of the Points tab. To adjust the settings of the BB code, we can use the button with three dots next to the code to edit the code table's definition of just that code. The Points tab defines how the points themselves are drawn. The layer for the point is completely user-definable, it can even come from pre-existing CAD files. Currently, the pen is set to dark gray and the style to plus. Hence, the BB points are drawn with a dark gray plus on screen. For the purposes of this video, we will change the color to magenta and the style to a diamond. Pressing OK to save the changes and back out of the properties, dialog allows the changes to have an immediate effect. Moving on to the Line tab, it's currently set to a dark green and dashed. Let's change that to yellow instead, using the Fence Diamond style. As you can see, the code table instantly changes the display of any BB-coded points when the screen updates. What about something slightly more complicated? Let's use the MHR3 code that has been defined to allow three-point rectangular manholes to be quickly and easily surveyed. With every third point, a new rectangle feature can be added. So far, we haven't really considered any level information. Let's add some levels to the start and end of the BB line. There are a few ways to do this, but for now, we will just enter them directly into the spreadsheet view. Flicking back to the graphics view, it's now possible to see. Those levels have been automatically annotated and aligned to the line work for us by the code table. To assign levels to the other points, we will use a tool that calculates the height of the points by linearly interpolating from one end of a line to another, assuming both ends have a valid height. Diving into the code table again and looking at the current settings for the height annotation, we can see the alignment is currently set to parallel auto. This makes the text at each point on the line parallel to the segments before and after. However, if the line direction deviates from the straight by more than the predefined amount, 10 degrees in this case, then the text will be aligned to the segment before. This is really used for annotating the corners of buildings as it prevent the level text from protruding past the corner and looking untidy. If we change it to just the basic parallel option though, the difference is immediately apparent. The text is now cantered over the points and does not perhaps look as tidy. Switching it to parallel leading 
sets it back to similar how it looked before. To complete this example, let's assume that the manholes need their cover levels annotated. To do this, we need to enable the text tab and use what's called a text macro to pull out the relevant information. We start by entering the prefix mh so that anyone looking at the drawing will know it's definitely a manhole. Then on the next line, we enter cl for cover level. Then a percentage bracket followed by pz and then a closing percentage bracket. The percentage brackets instruct nforce to retrieve some data from the point. pz is short for the point z value. Flicking to the shape tab, we can see that the shape type is set to three point rectangle and the pen to light gray and the style to solid. Hence, that's what we see on screen, dot i.e. a rectangle drawn with a solid light gray line. Before we close the box, we will tick the option to hide the second points. This is just to make the drawing look neater. The rectangles will still draw the same. Updating the view with a pan shows an MH next to each point, but no level. This is because they don't yet have one. So by clicking on each point in turn, we can provide a level for each of the manholes. Finally, we will use the annotation point text move tool to reposition the text. That concludes this brief introduction to Enforce.